Van Michael. Van, why don't you tell us a little something, something about you? Well, well, thank you, thank you for, for inviting all of us in, in, ho in having this uh, panel, Black uh, Liberation Through Mutual Aid. I am Van Michael Milhouse. I am from Baltimore, Maryland, and I am the director and founder of Element of Hope, which is a grassroots organization that is Baltimore-based, Baltimore, Maryland. However, we have a national reach. We have worked specifically with trans masculine folk on the entire spectrum uh, who are AFAB folk. Um, we have worked in and out of community. We do work in, uh, let's see, mental health that boils down to things like finding respite care for those of us who are struggling in the moment, actual moment, finding places for them to be. Um, oh my goodness, it's, it's, it's a passion. It's a passion work. Um, and I'm excited to be here today. Today is a very monumental day. I find that uh, the passing of the Juneteenth holiday um, and then having this discussion today about Black liberation and mutual aid. Um, it is time for change. And I'm looking forward to this, this, this hot discussion so that we can forward, forward, move our pendulum forward. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And thank you to all of our panelists for being here. Um, again, we are doing ASL so, and um, uh, Spanish translation. So if everyone could, uh, Again, just when one person stops talking, jump on in there, but don't talk over each other. That way they can make sure that we get the uh, accessibility. So let's, let's dive right in. Let's dive right in. So this question is for all of you. Um, what exactly does, does black liberation mean to you? What is that, what is that, that particular phrase, those two words, um, what does that mean for you? Anyone can jump in. For me, it would mean inclusion. It will also mean that I'm heard and also seen. Thank you. Thank you. Ben, Thank you. Or, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, Savannah, yeah. Oh, so I was just going to add that the way that I see it is also very similar to what you said is liberation and like there's no appropriate way for us to show up, that we show up in our entirety. So that means like if I'm hungry, if I'm tired, right? If I'm a sex worker, if however I show up, I need to feel liberated and heard and included. And that's how, how I see that, how I feel that. Thank you so much for that. Van, what you got? You know, I, um, I often lately uh, listen to the words that we use. So I'm into being clear. So when I use the word black, for me, I'll take it from black, means that I um, am claiming my, my descendants from the mid-Atlantic slave trade of those of us who have landed here on this part of the North American shores, but not also uh, forgetting about the rest of us in the diaspora, which I like to use, you know, of, of color, you know, because black to me denotes that I, I am a descendant of those who have landed here um, and endured the Willie Lynch system. Uh, so that's one thing I like to, to delineate when I speak about black and then black liberation. When I think of liberation, um, and I think of uh, the word itself, I think of the word um, freedom, and I also think of the word uh, liberation, what is the difference? So I like to carve out that difference in my own mind. And so for me, freedom feels like it's a thing of a, out of, it's a price to pray for freedom. You know, oftentimes we hear that. Um, and that price uh, comes at, for instance, if we look at it in terms of how we're living and what we're dealing with here, the non um profit, it was a non-for-profit industrial complex, because there's a price for that. You know, you, you have to almost sacrifice your soul sometimes to, to, to gain resources in a sense, um, versus uh, liberation, um, which is a self-led um, uh, movement, and it is a process. Um, and the, and, the, and there's a saying that says, give me liberty or give me death, because there's a deeper meaning um, in, uh, for, for liberation than it is to me for freedom. And so when I think of Black liberation, I'm coming from the self-led um, movement of myself personally, internally and outwardly. And then I move into a communal space. And how do I project that communally? How do I show up communally? Um, so that's, that's a little bit how I feel about Black liberation, what it means to me personally, um, and how I'll use that in Element of Hope um, and walking with that, especially with trans masculine and those on that spectrum who are from the AFAB um, area. Awesome. That, and you know what, I resonate so much with that, brother. Um, August, what you got for me? Yeah, um, I, I think of it as, as, as everyone said, like a, a process. Um, my biggest thing is, is 
how I'm moving every single day to get free and to make sure the people that look like me are, are getting free um, from the systems is and isms that keep us unhoused, unemployed, um, and without our, without our needs met. Um, and especially uh, leaning toward not relying on those systems to get free. Um, I think liberation requires us to lean away from the NPIC, from the 501c3, the 501c4, um, and those foundations who have the wealth and, and the resources to, um, to quote unquote free us. But uh, I guess what I'm, what I'm thinking through is, is the fact that we all have the capacity um, to really lean into each other to, do, to, to get that work done. Gotcha. I, you know what, all of you, uh, the responses are, are profound and I definitely resonate with all of that. Um, so let's move through this. Let's, let's really, uh, as Gina says, let's fuck some shit up. Uh, how do you see, how do you see uh, black liberation work through mutual aid? Savannah, you got that for me? I guess I do. I, I just ain't want to jump for the bullet, always being the first one. <laughs> <laughs> but since you called me out, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like that question right there, because number one, we have to use community to live our dreams and to make things come into life. Community is what's going to keep things going. As long as the community is on the same page. And as long as the community wants the same things, and that's the same things for each other and not in it for just single advancement. So that's what I wanna say. And then Van, what you said earlier about the bill, I'm waiting for that stamp in red, paid in full. <laughs> I hear it. Well, Savannah, man, can I add into you? You're not muting. Just, just jump in there. What, what you so, got? you know, Savannah, you made a good point here, and it's a community and wanting the same thing. And I think that's a great thing to highlight when we talk about mutual, being mutual, right? Um, and, and having that good talk clearly in community. I'm going to say, hey, Savannah, what is it um, that you envision for yourself? And then I can say what I envision and how to work in you in harmony. And in unison, yes. without having to necessarily agree on everything, you know, but the, the ways in which we do it is, is important. So I like when you said that. Um, and then when I think of two mutually, um, it's, it requires consent and an ongoing consent as we do yes. as we do the work. And that's in the community. And as I look outside of those that want to help, those who um, provide mutual aid um, with, with, I call it, you know, uh, say monetary mutual aid to organizations that are grassroots organizations or those, you know, no barrier giving. There's a responsibility too on their end, right? To understand why they're giving. Again, because giving, giving, right? From a charity and an emotional standpoint is one thing, but to, to give in, in a justice, from a justice lens is very different because then that, that requires those upper echelon organizations to, to, to remove those stipulations, if you will. So for me, I like to look around because uh, it's people led, it's, it's straight from the people. You know, if, if we're doing money, we are raising it on our own and putting it in. And if you want to contribute, then you can, but it still has to be consensual. So conversations and, and clarity on um, language that we use, um, lowering our language and stuff like that, you know, keep, keeping it real, as I say, you know, look, break it down for me. You know, all of those things go into mutually helping one another internally and intracommunally and, and, and you know, across the, across the uh, board. Y'all might hear my puppy crying too. No. <laughs> okay. No, I, I, you know what, Van, there was something that you said that, that really struck me um, is that we don't have to agree. Okay. We don't have to agree um, about Chinese food. We don't have to agree on, you know, all of the, the arbitrary things, but we do have to agree to work with each other. So I, I definitely hear you there, um, August. Lex, either yeah. one. Yeah, um, I definitely think about the the agreeing part. I'm sitting with the thought that like when we're engaging in these mutual aid projects and organizations, the agreeing um, 
I guess the, the, we're, we're all operating under this understanding that we are living under conditions and systems that are putting us uh, at a, a, a need um, and, and, and keeps us, I guess what I'm, what I'm thinking through is we're all agreeing that we're operating under a system of anti-Blackness, right? And, and what that means is we're gonna commit to getting each other through that, be that through particular services like carpooling or, or actual giving circles. Like we've, we've already engaged in mutual aid without even naming it as such. Like I think it, w- it was coined in like the 1970s or something, but Black folks have been doing this for centuries. So it, it, it's, 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 it's about a commitment to each other's survival, each other's wellness and saying that I, I, I have the capacity to love you. I have the capacity to like I said, get you free. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Go ahead, Lex. What you got? Um, yeah, I just it reminded me so much of this uh, quote that I uh, posted earlier today by Harriet Tubman that says, "I had reasoned this out in my mind. There was one of two things I had a right to: liberty or death. If I could not have one, I would have the other. For no man should take me alive. Should I should fight for my liberty as long as my strength lasted. And when the time came for me to go, the Lord would let them take me. And when I read that, I realized that, you know, civil rights is constantly moving. And we we are so ancient, but then so new to this world. And so when I hear mutual aid, I hear tribe. I hear soul tribe. Um, when I hear um, caring for one another, I hear love. I hear um, you know, love is the highest vibration. And so I love you even when you're not fully there. I love you even when I want you to live. I want, I'm, I'm there for your success. And because sometimes we don't always see the same picture, but at the end of the day, we need to have patience for each other because where I am and how I stand today was not without a lot of men like Lucky, a lot of, a lot of women like Savannah, right, that looked out for me that cared for me, that showed me, yo, yo I'm, I'm your brother, I'm your auntie, I'm your sibling. And that above all made me realize I have a place here, okay? Because we came from, I, I was in Yahoo groups at 12 and stuff when I wasn't supposed to be, but I found community online, <laughs> you know what I mean? And until it manifested into my reality, I, I will always say this, we fight for something that we don't see, hear, or feel just yet but it manifests in our reality and baby ain't that God. And so I feel like that's what we're working with here. And, um, and so I know that some people may be, you know, trailing behind, but as long as mutual aid to me means um, I'm going to check in on you, right? Even if, if you really, if sometimes you step on my neck a little bit, I'm going to check on you, you know, and if you want to go the other way, well, Harriet had to leave some people too for a second until they snap back, maybe, you know, and, and, and sometimes it's like that, but as long as we at least have that that system of, of, of caring and functioning off of love and gratitude and showing that we're here and we're not afraid because we have nothing to be afraid for. So walk like you belong because you do, because God or whatever you believe in made room for you here. So, yeah. Story. You just, you sent those shivers up my up my spine right there, man. Um, so that kind of leads into the, the next question. And that was a, a beautiful leeway into um, how do we use mutual aid within the black trans community to heal our community? How do we how do we use that particular mechanism to bring our community much, much closer together and heal our folks? I, I kind of want to start by um, like offering this something a pattern that I'm noticing is that a lot of our our folks in community feel isolated or have been isolated and I I do think that a part of that healing is is allowing us to trust again that we have the capacity to get each other free but really building community through these mutual aid networks um like locally specifically I'm thinking about Devin Lowe who is like my hero um and runs Black Trans Travel Fund like obviously, you know, we're seeing a need and 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 meeting that need. Um, and I think if if we're if we're speaking about healing, we, we have to we have to live to heal. So getting those material resources instead of just 
listen to black trans women or uplift black trans men where are we where wh what happens after that what happens after that tweet that post like what what material resources are you offering the girls the boys the days um to make sure that they get home at night to make sure that they're fed to make sure that they're housed to make sure that they have access to counseling like i i love when people speak life into me i'm a leo but I also recognize that I have material needs that aren't being met because of the ways that anti-Blackness operates, because of the ways that trans antagonism operates in this nation. So if we are all clear on that, I think leaning into each other, um, as so many of these Black trans-led organizations have over the years, um, we can really start to heal. Like there's not, there's way too much funding out here for us to not be pulling pulling more money out for us to be pouring into each other. Like we, we, have, we have so much collective power and I think commitment to our own survival. Like we've, we've already started. Um, I mean, we kind of see that with y'all doing that kind of work, but yeah, I think, I, I don't wanna, I don't wanna go on too long, but just, I'm just thinking about how, how we can shift our, our affirmations and speaking life into and translate that into real tangible impact in the ways that we've seen in like um all of these organizations definitely definitely thank you so much for that august um anyone go ahead van let's, let's i wanted let's to add in to a couple of things here um uh, nation the word nation was it lex you thought of nation um and i think of that too i see us as many uh, tribes and that collective even though it may not be physically visible to the naked eye does exist and we feel that even in moments like this where we're even in a box yet or looking into a box yet we know that we are speaking life into as you said August um, and talking to community as you said Savannah um, and pouring this out to me that is um, dynamic and that is the power of our transcendence because we can see a thing before it even has come into fruition on this plane and building and walking towards it even though everyone else cannot see it and I think we have to keep that uh, ability. I also wanted to speak to um, the question, can you repeat that again for me uh, Lucky? Help me. So the, the question is how do we how do we heal our community through this mutual aid? I was, I'm, I'm a little older, right, in, in the earth, earth manifestation, but I'll say this with element of hope, the way that we have used it is, is understanding that we are part of a network that we can't see. And so, for instance, I used to do a group myself at a, a place here in Baltimore, Hearts and Ears, um, when there was no one around. Someone introduced me to this place um, over 20 years ago, and I came back and started giving back just because it gave to me. And in that, I was able to meet another uh, trans masculine guy um, and help them on their journey. And in that, they are now um, the director of Hearts and Ears here in Baltimore. Being around that person, mentoring them, and also them mentoring me is the mutual connection that we had that now they're making an impact here in Baltimore. It looks like, uh, you know, Merrick Moses being recognized for um, the hometown hero just recently, Baltimore Orioles, you know, and, and again, mutual relationships happening and mentoring happening uh, so that bills can be passed and, and things of that sort. Um, also, when you look here and even in California, you know, Visible T, 365, AJ Scrubs, that's mutual aid helping. Those are us digging into each other and seeing our own visions within ourselves and others and bringing it forthright into manifestation so that we can you know, move our uh, agendas and, and needs forward, get our needs met. Same thing, you know, trans men rising in Savannah. And so when I, when I think of uh, mutual aid and how are we doing it to heal our communities, when we show up one on one off, as they, we say authentically, but understanding our hurts and even understanding that, hey, you may have tapped on me real quick, but I understand where you've been a little bit. And if not, you know, I can fall back a little bit and then still help you along the way. Um, I think that's the way that we begin to help heal one another. And then once we heal on the inside, we can begin to see who we are, however that may be, and then move into our purpose. And I just wanted to emphasize just a little bit, especially on the mentorship. 
we have got to mentor our youth because you mentioned that you were older and I'm older than, 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 than the, the earlier years that you were speaking of. <laughs> so we have got to put underneath our wings that Lucky is getting ready to send me <laughs> your youth so that they understand where to continue mm. where we left off. Mm. They got to understand our legendary history there you or go. the reason why we have to fight so hard, mm. the reason why we have to protest, the reason why we cannot accept the word no. I'm, as a child, I couldn't even accept the word no. Mama, what that lollipop? Baby, you can't have it now. Why? Why? <laughs> so I was trained at a young age to debate the word no. I want to know if you say no, I can't have it. Why? And so many people have told me no. And if I would have believed that, none of my visions would have come into reality. So I want to make sure that the main thing that we teach our youth is never let them to accept the word no. Keep fighting for the generation that is um, under them. And, we, and the biggest community in the youth, too, is the ball scene. And the ball scene is structural. Believe it or not, it's structural because it's teaching you responsibility of reality into a community that loves them, that holds them, that understands them. And then that's where the fight begins for people like that to be in that community. Absolutely. See, I ain't go first. I ain't go first, but yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Also, add into about our, as we call them, elders. Some folk may use the word elders, right? Um, I like to look at that word sometimes because our lifespan says that eldership really can look differently at different age brackets if you will, dependent on life experience. And I think that looking in this, this binary, the systems that we live in now um, limit the scope upon which we can see ourselves and we have to step out of to see ourselves. Because at, at I remember meeting someone, they were like 25 years old, but the work that they had done from high school, college, in midlife, I was like, hold up, you're only 25 and this is what you put down already? You have a long way to go, right? So they had a, a lot of wisdom to offer me. So I also want to toy with that um, because that breaks, that opens up. Let me say that, oh, I say that opened up for me, the ability to see outside of the, the structural systems of, you know, binary one, you can either be, you can't be old and considered an elder until you're like, say a certain age. It broke all of that down. Right. Also for me, um, when I think of elders and I think of those that are, say, 45 and older, those say even who are are um, just coming into realizing exactly who they are and how they are and how they should be here. There's a gap because everything is youth focused and it's not desi the designs aren't by us and our brain. So if I say that um, youth focused and someone say, oh, yeah, that cutoff age would be, say, 25 or 24. Well, in my brain. It doesn't always end up like that because although I might have life experience of say all the way up until 35 years old and then I realized who I am and coming into my new self or emerging, then there's some things that are missing that you can't cut off and say, well, at this age, you should know better. If, if, if I'm connecting with anybody here, let me know. Um, so I offer too to look at our elders who have life experience without the labels. That's important to tap into and, 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 and um, to, to, to bridge bridge that would be critical, I think, somewhere where we can go. Definitely, definitely. Thank you for that. Then, Michael, what you said was really profound because uh, what, I, what I see in healing is that healing, healing is accessible, healing is fat-friendly, healing, um, healing knows that we are in different parts of our race with ourselves, healing knows that 
sometimes we need our inner child. Healing knows that maybe sometimes you need an ice cream, you need that lollipop, you need your favorite cereal, you need your cartoon, you need that stuffed animal. Healing knows that it comes in different ways and it's individual and then it's also collective. And, and so how I see that is that it's, it's strategic. And so I need to know that you pouring into my cup doesn't mean that you're empty. I need to know that if I need to hold space, if I need space to be held for me, maybe we need to talk about boundaries. We deserve, you know, we're worthy of that. We're not, not even deserving, we are worthy of having space being held, intentional space where everyone can show up as they are and in their highest if they can. And if they're not, then what do you need? Do you need a meal? Do you need somebody to listen to, listen to you? Do you need someone to, to tell you about something, to call you in, call you out? We take it differently sometimes. So, and, and that's how I see healing. Um, it, 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 is, it is, is comprehensive and it's not just equal. It's, it's, it's the parity for me, it's the depth. Does what you serve meet the depth of what I need? Is it possible? If not, then there's something that Jada Pinkett Smith said on Facebook, right? And she's not paying us, but well, listen, I'm gonna say it anyway. Um, she said, sometimes you need to ask for what you need. And the only two things you'll find out is the source doesn't have it or you get what you need. And that's what we're finding out in our community. If you don't have what we need, then step, you know, and we'll find where we can get it. Absolutely. Ashe, Ashe. Yes. Ashe. Yes, thank you. Thank you all for that. Um, and it actually goes into the, the, you all are fantastic. We're going into the next question here. And um, it's around like, how do you all uh, within your respective organizations or in, within the work that you do implement uh, mutual aid and, and healing uh, for the, the, specifically for the Black trans community? All right, I, can you, am I on? Yeah. Yes, we can hear you. One of the ways the element of hope has been able to show up, I always operate, I guess, from a place of, um, I see me, and I know if there's someone out, someone like myself who has a need for something, someone else got to have it too. I'm not by myself. I hold on to that. Um, and one of the ways is really simply asking. And it's been hard to learn how to ask, one, and I'll go into that later. But for instance, if someone needs a ride somewhere and I know someone that has a car, hey, are you able to take a person here on this said date for their surgery, for their groceries, for an appointment for their child? And that began a basic network, basic network. And Ironing that out now, that network goes across the country without the network even knowing that it's connected to one another, just because we ask one another without making it a big production, this is what you need. And so now here we have a community that is able to say, you know, I need some food um, and able to say, here's some food for you, but not only temporary, but how do we get into fixing this? How do we get into helping you go through the system uh, for, to, 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 um, to not have to be in this place again? Is it that you're having trouble getting to social services? Is it that you don't understand like the application? Is it that, what is it on a base life, life level? You know, like, and I'll stop there because it, it, that's, so, so to, to sum it up, the way the element of hope works is, is that we, I recognize a lot of connectors and connecting us to us and letting it spirit take it where it needs to be. Can you repeat that one more time, please? Which part? <laughs> what part? Oh, so I got you. I heard you on um, the question because the door rang and I'm in Brooklyn and <laughs> No, I got <laughs> <you>. <laughs> the doorbell. <laughs> Definitely. So the question was within the work that you do or within the organization that you 
represent or, or come to the table with how do you implement mutual aid specifically specifically to um, the black trans community that's a daily that's a that's a daily from 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 the people that i do open mics with intentional healing through art to meditations through um acupuncture to um let's say if people need binders or people need um whatever they need to, to get right right it, it it's endless and we have so much within i i feel like a lot of it is just recognizing what we have within we have doctors we have lawyers we have politicians we have everything within each other if we and and what i really I like to engage is it's about worth i feel like that is one of the biggest struggles we have with at large but within our community is that is is how worthy we are and i feel like what savannah said connecting with the youth and also understanding we got a lot to learn a lot to learn from the youth as well because they are in these systems right and a lot of the same things that i hear my elders speak about um are the same things that the youth are go going through so what's up we need a link we need to understand what's happening where's the disconnect because obviously they've had us apart from each other so much so that we couldn't even communicate but now we're here we're connecting those dots so i feel like right now it's just it's just the strategy i know me for me right a uh, 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 mutual aid will look like look i i have the words i can speak it but i need somebody to check in on me sometimes i can't always be the strong friend i need somebody to 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 hey you need your portfolio let me help you get to this get this together right and so we all have different things that we may need somebody may need like hey I need mental health check. I need you to come with me to to my to my um, psychologist appointment. There's no shame, you know. And it may just be you need to go at 12 p.m. instead of eight because you're not gonna make it because you sleep, you know. <laughs> like, it's, so you know, it's however however it needs to happen for real. It's a walk. It's a way of life. It is. I hear you saying it's a way of life, and that's what it is. It's, it's not something that I, I know. For, like I said, I feel I'm resonating with you. It's not something that I pick up or put down. It is a way of life. It is a walk, and it's deep. It's um, and I like when you said, you know, it's and we have it all. And worth, I will say again, I'm with you on that. Like the, the worth piece is is hmm, paramount to understand our worth. Um, this. I can't say enough to that. Yes. And I also I, I also have to mention that we have to sit around boards. We have to sit around boards to make sure that we aren't forgotten. We got to sit around boards to make sure that the boards that we can't sit around, that we have allies to fight for us. For example, I go to executive directors and teach them words and teach them things that they're going to forget at their regular meeting. Like when y'all put money to gay men health and gay men this, remember a percentage of that needs to come to the trans community. And I don't mean a crumb percentage because they will throw you some money to shut you up. Well, we need some money to shut me up and I can do something with it. I need to be empowered by you so I can empower other people. That's my motive of, of being around boys and being around people that can help a community out. And we all have to learn that it's a skill. It ain't all about going yes. to all rooms and cursing everybody out. That's what true. you gonna curse these people? What they gonna give you? I agree. Right. Somebody told me you don't need to be on that board. You ain't mean enough. I made a success on that board. All right. And when they mentioned the token word, I said I love being the token because I didn't open that little gap to a big window to let my people in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that's it. That's that drop the mic. That's that drop the mic. Yep. 
There you go. <laughs> Savannah, I'm going to stand in you in that, that um, the going in and perking out piece. Mm -hmm. Can do a disservice. Sometimes people need to be rattled like that. Now everything serves yeah. a purpose, right? And I'm with yeah. you. But after yes. that, that's being in there and saying, and then I opened up that window means a lot because somebody can't get to that table. Somebody, a lot of us still ain't making it to the tables. And I know me working, um, I have a thing in faith communities and dealing in that worth piece. I like to work on folk from that standpoint because the church, the church has done some serious damage around our feeling of worthiness or unworthiness. And so unraveling those spaces is where I am at the moment. And I'll tell you, there's a deep work that needs to be done there. Um, and so one of my areas is working in those places and saying to people, listen, your language, the way that you, you know, um, want to become inclusive, say affirming is a and welcoming. Then what does that mean? You know, and helping those folk look in the mirror at them, their own self to see where their biases and their phobias lie in the barrier to doing the work that they say they want to do. So I'm with you in that, Savannah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. I need that. I need that. Thank you. I'm with you in that. Um, I think for me, I have really pivoted, like at, at, in the beginning of my organizing career, I really wanted to focus on being included. Everyone, sorry, that's the air fryer. Um, <laughs> having a voice, um, sitting at the table. And then at one point I was just like, I don't actually, I don't, I don't think I want a seat. I don't think I want the table at all. I want to, you know, dismantle the conditions that require us to, to have a table in the first place um, and how that looks in development particularly is, um, and in grant writing and fundraising and all of that, is these, these reporting requirements, um, the fact that you can't talk about sex work, you have to say like use certain words and mm -hmm. speaking to what Van Michael was saying with, with language, um, eligibility, needing to have your 501c3 or have a fiscal sponsor, like, I, I have been in this work for a few years now and I'm, I'm, I think my, uh, my trajectory has, has really shifted thinking that um, I want to open the door for black trans folks to come into development. We need more black trans folks in development. And now I'm like, no, I think I just want, um, I think I just want more than survival for us. I want us to not have to rely on these foundations um, to, to get our program funded, um, to keep the lights on. Also understanding that this is um, a journey and these foundations with all this bread are not about to say, hey, yeah, we're gonna give to individuals, happy Juneteenth. No, not at all. So right. what, I, <laughs> what I started doing was just taking on that, taking on, I think the labor that it requires black trans folks to um, sacrifice so much of their passion, so much of their dreams, all of that for, for, for grant funding um, as someone who is light and thin and, and has all of this, this proximity to power, that's fine. I'm, I'm going to write the grant. You don't need to pay me for that. Um, I want to make sure that y'all get the funding to get the work done because otherwise, who, where are you going to get the money from? Yeah, it, it, I think it's, it, it's recognizing that like this field is so so anti-black and so trans antagonistic and 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 knowing that um, someone still has to to ask for the money. Um, and I would much rather put myself in that position to get the organizations that I care about funding um, as a form of of, of labor. And mm. that's that's just mm. how how I've been approaching it. Right. You are mm -hmm. super phenomenal you. folks. I, I I can't be happier today. Um, and that's that's really going to kind of lead into to the next piece of this. What do you all think that the future of our Black trans community with respect to um, mutual aid and, and what does this look like in the future? How do you see the development of our, our Black trans community, our Black community, uh, what does it look like for you all? Or what is, what is if you had to really, um, if you had to really like envision what our future looks like, what would that perfect, perfect picture look like? I got to, um, sovereignty, 
in one word. Um, I just came from Juneteenth Jubilee, the second anniversary in, um, in Harlem. And uh, when I tell you, like, that's why I was coming in and running, because I, I literally ran from the train, um, <laughs> from the train. And it was, it was beautiful. When I, I, I never right. seen some, something where they honored trans mass people and, and everyone got flowers. All our siblings got, you know, they got flowers for, for, be, and for being honored for their work out loud, okay? Um, and to see, you know, to see people who watch me grow up be honored and I had to sit back and think for a moment in a moment of gratitude. My, my mom, my parts of my family friends would tell me I would never be loved like this, would tell me that I, I would never be, have a, have a family like this, would tell me I would never. And so I had to just jump back and come back and be like, whoa, okay, I knew, I knew this. And look at this right here before me in my lifetime. And so how I see it is sovereign, how I see it is land, how I see it is working with the land. I see us in, 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 in nature, I see us in the water, I see us in the ocean, I see us everywhere because we are natural and we always have been. And um, Ashe, and so I'm, I'm thankful and I, and I look forward to bridging those gaps and seeing what international work looks like. We deserve to be on every piece of this land you know, with, with love and grace and respect to those who are there. But we, we, we are worthy of working with these people and, and, and knowing that, you know, we have a place. And so, yeah, that's really how I see it. I see it as sovereign. I see it as working with medicine. I see us as not just relying on the Western system for um, Ashe. us. Ashe. I see it as, as us leaning into our, our, our given uh, gifts and those that we we've we fought for because let's believe we have a lot of power especially as as black especially with the with the diaspora we have yes so yes wealth within each other that if we just tap in every memory and every person before us that fought for us is inside of us and 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 that's what i see um yes yes yes, yes. <laughs> yes. I know I wish I had was able to go to that Harlem celebration that you went to. Then after it was over, I would have went right down the street to the Red Rooster and had me a good old meal, a good old meal. <laughs> Listen, Red Rooster. <laughs> <laughs> and I, we gonna talk. Okay, all right. But I Hello. also will want us to never lose vision on our dreams. My future consists of never lose the vision on the dream that I have and the dream that I have behind my mind that can come to life. I'm getting ready to work on a big, big project here and it's, it's Trans Folk Mental Health Summit. And that is gonna be something that we cannot leave out of our everyday conversation, mental health. You know, I don't know, but I've been through addictions and diagnosed with um, diseases and obesity and rejection. I need mental health. I need that in my life regularly. And so these are some of the tools that we have to use to tackle our community, to let people know these are our needs and they cannot be left out. Housing is very important. How can we work on ourselves when we can't even store our medicines in a medicine cabinet to make us better, a better member of society. Why we just can't pick the jobs that we are qualified for and get them, apply for them and get them. There's so much that we got to work towards, but it's even when I became an executive director and I filled out that form for the 501c3, I said, oh, this is going to be easy. Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then after you get into it, baby, you say, my Lord, where is the sugar? Where is the sugar part? The sweet part? Where is the easy part? Oh, Lord, no. And then every time you turn around, 
Well, every 501c3 and every rule is different. Every time you turn around somebody, you got to pay somebody with some license or some this, something, that. And you got two years, you got to do that. You might as well pay it now because it's going to be an interest rate later on. I said, where's all these rules? But that's the other means of holding us back and holding us down. And we got to, we got to, it ain't no way we're going to fight Uncle Sam. Ain't no way. So we better get that money together and, and hold what we got. And so many CBOs are counseled out of that process because the ones that's made it, that's big names, they ain't gonna help out no trans-led organizations. Oh, they, oh well, girl. Oh well, send your clients over here. Yeah, so that's what we have to do. We still have to be able to keep our dreams alive, keep fighting for ourselves and keep supporting one another. Mm -hmm. And of course, I always fight, I always holler. I want trans this, I want trans that, I want trans this, I want trans that. When I opened, when I started Trans Pride, I just kept saying that, I kept saying that. And, and one of my mentors said, Savannah, you must realize that the civil rights movement, movement was not done only by black people. So that was a learning lesson. And we learn as we go. And we pass on these lessons toward, to our future, to another generation. And sometimes the fight feels easy. And sometimes the fight feels harder. But we never feel like giving up. You got me hot and passionate. Because... <laughs> Because you you brought me back to when they had us in them houses um, before a lot of people went to, to France and stuff. Yes, there was a lot of the, the, those people who were Puritans and all that who was like, okay, they got to put a stop to this because I don't want to be, I don't want this on my on my record. You know, a lot of them white people who were like, okay, and, and, and that is a part of the history. And so it, it is very interesting, how, right? how we build this intentional work, but also how we find ways to heal, how we find ways to heal our wounds and understand and see people, see their soul and see yes. that, that you're getting to a place where you see me and I see you and we may uh, have the best of intention and we may impact in another way because we're coming from hurt places and spaces and sometimes we don't have the same words to say the same things. And so what, what you see as trust is not what I see as trust. What you see as hope may not be what I see as hope. And that's why, you know, Brother Van Michael talks about uh, the definitions, the roots, and we need to understand that to, to find the common ground between each other. And so when I think about these resources, when I think about this money, when I think about leveraging power, right? I think about some of these organizations getting off their high horses and stop, uh, excuse me, pimping us out. And, and, and how about you teach me how to grant right how about you give me actual power right um and, and so that's where i see also a, a part of that future is education right is is us being because me I, i'm i'm a proud uh college dropout um i only went to one year and i have my high school diploma and but guess what i am i am i am very intelligent and i and we need a lot of our people to understand how intelligent they are and how if you were on the streets that is also another form of knowledge if you were in prison if you were whatever it's also another form of knowledge just activate it you know just activate it so i, I you got me passionate that's all <laughs> I want, I, absolutely and you know i'm gonna come in here you know um the way and again i have been able to and that's mutual aid that educational piece you hit a nerve there because many of us how about ain't going to college ain't no college don't want to go it ain't for me that ain't my twist that's cool I did that so I'm here to give freely mutually give that aid to the individuals in my communities or our communities that need that help so if you might not know how to write the grant or, or do the application I'm not I'm not going to sit there and do it 
for you. I'm going to sit with you and show you how. That is mutual aid, and that's nation building on the that's ground right. level. Don't nobody have to give it. I already paid for the education. Now here it is given freely to you. That's mutual aid within the community, hands on. That's, okay, you went to their training over there. Now let me tell you the back, and let me tell you how to also use this training to build your nation or build your community. That is mutual aid giving. Those are the things. So not even sitting around. I see it. I have it. I can give it freely and not worry about, oh, well, you know, someone, I remember a lot of times, you didn't get paid for this. You get paid for that. You pay it forward. And payment isn't always in cash format. You know, so we also have to understand what payment is. Um, another piece that comes up for me is about Juneteenth. I'm going to say it. Do not get lulled back to sleep or to sleep or stay sleep because they have passed a federal holiday about Juneteenth. Do not do it. When they start, quote unquote, giving up things like federal holidays, it's over. It's a wrap. When they start giving up things like political seats, it's over. So when we talk about that dismantling the table, I like that. I also like to sit on the floor and cross my, my feet, you know, and get on, on the, in the dirt. And that's OK, too. Um, when we talk about this health piece, the whole health piece, this cannabis industry they've jumped into and really have. It came off the back of those who say well, people living with, with uh, HIV AIDS. Right. And so now people can't even access it, though. Right. First, we started in a health realm. Now I can't access it and think they're coming in on a hemp industry. These are the things that we do already. Because we, because this is what we do. We are chemists, you know. No matter if I was hustling on the street or whether I was doing it, you know, somewhere else, this is what we do. Just like you said, activate it. But how do I activate it? Because I'm beat down every day. God dang, I can't activate it, you know. So that's where we come and we lift up and say, you know what? I see you over there, you know. So let me help you out a little bit. Or what do you need? Or recognizing, hey, this person might not even take kindly to me because of the perception they might have of me, but I can send the word through somebody to get to you. Understanding that I think is also is, is critical in this, this move because the world has at reset. We are at reset. This is the prime time opportunity to move into our cosmology. In June 2019, I had the opportunity to sit with uh, at Union Theological Seminary uh, with Lala Zanel and uh, the Dean of the Episcopal School over there. And she asked what are some ways that we can get back to ground zero? For me, I suggest that going into our African cosmology, because that's where it's at. That's where it's at. We have to go back home even in that way, in our indigenous ways. And and not, and I'm and I don't want to say, you know, some folks say, well, I'm not African. I don't know. What I'm saying is go back into your indigenous root. That thing, that voice that speaks to you, the thing that told you you exist, even when they said you didn't, go to that. That thing would not fail you. And don't forget to call on your ancestors. Don't forget to call on Caleb Vaughn. Don't forget to call on Maury Proud. Don't forget to call on Monica Roberts. Don't forget to call on us. We are waiting on the other side. We did not leave here, right, from the physical body to not be used to activate what we need on this side. And that is the thing that we are missing. All right, you took it all the way in, man. Are we get ready to pass that plate. I say. We are passing that plate on them. Yes. Amen. I say, I say. August, August, talk to me. Yeah, I'm I'm really sitting with that. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm really sitting with that, especially Monica. Um yes. wow, yeah, yeah. Um yes, Monica. I think, I think that, um, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm still sitting with Monica. I'm, I, I, I might need a minute. It's, <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. That's why yeah. when we call our ancestors, that's what's supposed to happen. Keep calling yeah. them. This is the moment to call them. Whoever it is that have not made it to this yeah. moment that you, listen, call them out right now. This is the moment. Everybody that is listening, call them all out and call them down. That's what they are here for. They're waiting for us to call on them. They will come in swiftly. I promise you that. They are here, just awaiting. If you, I don't know them all. If you know them, call them. Bobby Jean, call them. <laughs> call them all. Mia Henderson, call them. Call them all out. Call them all down. Yeah, I think I'm. I'm thinking like something that just came to mind as far as mutual aid goes. It's obviously pouring into Black trans mass folks, um, Black trans men. I like. Lucky called me. What was it like a, a few weeks ago? Just talking about the legacy program with invisible men and, and and I'm just I want so much more for the boys and like I um I, I don't want I do not want hyper visibility I want I, I don't want resilience for us I want resources um and for me that 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 um mutual aid looks like 
really focusing on how are we how are we serving everybody in community? How are we showing up for everybody? How are we making space, interrupting harm? How are we um, how are we just you know making sure that that we're all surviving? Um, so I guess I'm just I'm really just thinking through uh, like offering those. I guess what what Lex was talking about with uh, with grant writing and everything because that field is is a it's it's a lot and um, just thinking through how like we can all eat it's it's enough it's enough to go around um, and I think pouring into each other making sure that we all know we're not in competition that all of these orgs are not in competition like there's just so to me there's so few. Um, black trans led orgs and um, committing to again resources um, and not necessarily a pedestal making sure that that each other's just making sure each other's needs are met and that requires us to, to really acknowledge that we we need to be building trust and building community and, and breaking bread with each other and really sharing physical space with each other um, I think it's a really good start um, but I'm definitely still sitting with Monica right now. So yes. Yes. Thank definitely. you. May I add something? Go for it. Um, so yeah, thinking about Monica, um, thanking her for all her work and and for her courage for making things and for all of us that make things and may and may be like, dang, even if nobody sees this, I just I'm glad that I did it. You know. Um, and, and, and I'm calling on all of our siblings, our ancestors, those that whose names we've never known, who we've never met, who are in places in faraway spots of the world that um, are fighting, fighting with nothing else around them that looks like them. I feel them. Um, and, and so I, how I see it is also healing, also strategy, but also we may not like politics, but we need politicians. Um, we need, there's a lot of seats coming up and I'm really, I'm, I'm really, I've been talking about this for a minute now in my circles is like, we need our, our people, young, whoever, who, who's, who, who can um, to run for office. We need it, we need it. Why? Because we know what happens and look at it. I mean, I'm just saying, they like to say third world is looking real third worldish over here. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just looking, you know, they like to say those things. We all one world, you know what I mean? And so we, we need to understand that some people get into power and position, right? Um, and, and, and we need to not think and see these things on the TV as if this is the truth. This is not the truth. There are so many more of us um, that than we know of and so many people that know was what was right is right. Was wrong is wrong, period. And so, if you are in, are you if you are co-signing the death and martyrs of people, then well, somebody's gonna come to you in a dream and tell you that you need to start helping Black trans people and trans people in general, right? Because, I mean, that's what it's about. Um, and so, you know, it. it all of that, we need that support. And then we need to, we need to find our ways in these offices, you know, in these boardrooms, speaking to these people. It's uncomfortable as hell, I'll tell you. I've, I've been, you know, at City Hall testified, you know, I had to remind them people about the quote right above their heads, we the people. So that's it, you know? You know, I, I really that, appreciate it. Yeah, give me give me a sec. I really appreciate what what you said there, Lex. I think that folks need to understand that uh, we all have different truths, and they can all coexist at the same time. That doesn't make one truth any less true than someone else's, but it's it's they already does. We already these truths already exist, right? And uh, I, I really really heard I heard you loud and clear. What you got, Van? Yeah, this just got me going. You know, this I um spent time with um a brother in leaving out. Sorry, y'all. A brother in North Carolina, uh, Pastor Michael uh, Shannon of Dynamic Faith 
ministries. And one of the things that he always says is there's always more. And I keep that in mind when I feel like, you know what, this is, this got the, I'm done. There's always more. Um, and there are things that are needed for a nation, meaning a group of people or different sets of people all together in a nation, right? That they need things like land. They think, need things like the ability to govern self, the ability to have self-agency in all aspects of life. And that's where we're moving. Um, and, and so I want everyone to be encouraged in that. But when we do, and when we're talking about trans masculine folk in um, the AFAB arena, it is important to understand that to me, the viewpoint of that body, the vessels, the viewpoint, the Western viewpoint of the black AFAB body must be addressed in order to understand why certain things are not being addressed. And we have to look at that. Um, and that's a long, that's a long haul, but that requires the communities itself to go inside and talk about the things that we have dealt with living in this particular body and moving through these particular environments from reproductive justice to what does um, with Kyle Peterson down in Atlanta, what does that look like coming out of jail when you're doing self-defense around rape, sexual assault, um, things like uh, what does it look like when you want to birth your own child and you're not living in these, these confines of what it means to be a parent. So those are the things that we have to address and we have to get downright serious about it. So that's the part, and that deals with your mental health. That to me combines with the church when you're told that you know, you're nothing but a second class citizen, if not. In this case, not, not in existence at all. You know, how do you rise and come through that? When the church is very permanent within black communities, period. You might not go to the church, might not go to the building, but the mindset is there. And that's what we're breaking, the mindset, the, the spells that have been put upon us. And we all have the ability to, 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 to break them, if you will. You know, um, and I am also one of a pan-Africanism. We are di of the diaspora, we say, but what does that mean? That means being able to understand what this means across the waters for us too, and connect with those with this, this internet. We have the ability, some of us, because not of all of us had the data plan to connect with one another. And that's another piece, the, the digital divide that has deepened. So we have to remember, so we're straddling about four different worlds, if not more here. And that takes a lot too. So I wanted to you know, put us on to that. So those are some of the thoughts that just came up out of what you all were sharing just now. All right. Well, I want to appreciate all of you for being on this panel. We got, we got one, one question to wrap it up. Uh, and, you know, this is, this is where we need y'all to, to really put it out there. This is where we, we're going to really fuck some shit up. <laughs> uh, what would you tell that next activist, that next organizer, that next black trans person that's come into this world and they want to tear up shit, right? And they want to, and I mean, really in a good way, in, in the best way possible that, that really want to be um, part of this community and wants to really uplift the next generation coming behind them. What would y'all, what kind of, what would that be, that piece of advice be? Savannah? I would say you are our future. Hold on. Hold on. Thank you. Who we got? Anyone else want to jump in there? Stay in the moment. Stay in the moment. You're not crazy. This is not for show. This is real. The future is now. The past is the present. <laughs> and the present is the gift. Really. Flex, August. Um, for me, I'm, I'm thinking through interrogation first, uh, to really sit with, um, how you are policing yourself, how you might be policing others, really doing the work to unlearn all of that, um, when you enter into, uh, 
this type of labor for each other. Um, another one is, is, is that's coming to mind is, is learn who your community is, specifically pod mapping. Um, I would say I'm a student of abolition. Um, and a huge part of that for me is understanding who I can call on when I have been harmed, who I can call in when I've committed harm and who is going to like facilitate accountability in life, who has resources to offer me when I'm navigating a housing crisis or I need a ride or I'm experiencing health issues. Um, all of those things I think are so important when you're entering mutual aid work, when you're entering community organizing. Um, and I think that that gets left out when we think about just protesting. Um, and that's just such a small part. It, it's important, but it's such a small part in this work. Um, learn your boundaries and, 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 and hold on to them. Let them shift, bend, whatever it takes for you to grow. But um, know that this is, this is such a long journey and, and, and I have been forever transformed by it. I will continue to be transformed by it as far as my gender goes, as far as my expression goes, my politics, all of that. But just be willing to be transformed um, for the sake of your own community. Um, I will never regret uh, <laughs> leaning out of, of, of wanting structure and, and, and policing my own body, policing, all of these things because I, I just freedom freedom requires you to to really um, rid yourself of ego and I think when you're entering into this work that is such a huge part of it of just letting go of your ego um, and trust that black trans folks want the best for you um, and care for you um, and have the resources and, and the capacity to see see us see us through it. Thank you. Thank you, August. So I might be long-winded. Um, so I'm, I'm someone who has been in mental institutions, been in solitary confinement in jail, and I had what seemed like no one else around me or with me. And the thing that I would give to myself or lend to the future is one day, you will be exactly who you need to be to give you what you didn't have. I say it again, you will be exactly who you need to be to give you what you never had because you're the only one that will know what was missing or what you didn't get. So I will also lend that I have two grandmothers, um, well, three, one transitioned that all love me um, and that is a blessing. Um, and it was hard for them to love me because of our other people in our family. But I talk to them now. And one of my grandmothers said to me, my nana, she said, es que cada persona es un mundo. Every person is a world. And my abuela said to me, te tiene que, I need to tell you every call. Te quiso, te quiere y te quiero. I've wanted you, I want you. And I want, I want you now, I love you, I love you now. And so I wanna say that my grandmothers are your grandmothers. The love that I receive is your love that you can receive. And so the days that you feel that there's nothing around you, understand, look within, everything that you have, anything that you've ever manifested or will is right inside of you. Don't be distracted by what you've lost or what you lost in the past or what you feel you will lose. Lose the fear because the moment is now to give yourself what you need, whether it's an icy, whether it's looking, saying, oh, I thought somebody wouldn't be there for me today, but I took a chance, I took a bet, and maybe I needed to look back in the mirror, but that's okay, because I vibrate high enough to love myself so that somebody else has the blueprint to love me the correct way, not conditionally. And so that's what I would lend. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness, y'all give me life today. All of you give me mad life today. Um, we have a couple minutes left to take a couple questions. So if we have some questions in the, are there some questions? No? Uh, for all of those folks that are watching, are there any questions you want to ask our panelists? Um, anything that you want us to extend out? 
I'm still thanking the organizing committee for putting my name on this list because this right here, this I will carry, this feeling I feel from this conversation. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for, thank you for your yes. All right, we've got one question. Okay, so the question is, um, does anyone have any advice for holding space for themselves? Anybody want to? If I may have, they made an altar. I didn't know anything about um, holding space for yourself is critical. Um, and that can go, that's a wide, that's a broad question that might can be something that can be talked about one-on-one -on -one with any one of us who feels that we could. But I would start by saying, I'm not sure where you are, but if you need to get a blanket right now, wrap yourself in it, that's holding space for yourself. Um, if you need to, if you're not there and you can make an altar, you know, make an altar and it could be something simple as, um, and I'll stop there. Um, Cause that sounds, that feels like there's something deeper that's going on right there. Someone else could feel that. I would just say, take naps. Okay, go sleep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you better get that dog some love. That's what you need to do, baby. Right. <laughs> Pick we need that, that dog love. up and put him in your lap or something. Right. I'm, Get, I'm open to talking right. to that person though offline. <laughs> okay. Do we have any other questions? Okay. Okay. So there's a question, and this question is for, for all of you. Um, what do you do to uplift yourselves, like specifically to you as a person? Savannah, I feel like you, you have a really good answer for this one. Well, I, I lift myself silence, meditation, music. Writing, turning his computer off on the weekend there and picking it back up on Monday. Mm -hmm. That cell phone, keep it in a car after Friday. So your mind has a chance to just rest. Yes, I'm here for that. Van, August, Aoife. Um, for me, I've, I've, I'm learning what it means to um, experience all of that. So right now, it looks like getting a fresh retwist and a lineup. Um, uh, <laughs> it also means not looking at my emails over the weekend. Um, doing things that really, like, I guess, speak life into me. Um, make me smile because like no one else is going to do that um but me no one else can make me feel full but me so I I right now I'm really focused on you know getting my lineup getting my retwist uh writing every now and then um and I guess just just dreaming of of of, of um the possibilities yeah and it looks I'm good it looks good the way it is now Ways that I'm learning now, I'm with you all, is learning how to do that, how to lift myself up. Um, and one of the ways I'm doing it actively now is lifting myself up in my own home um, and making space for myself in my own house. Something real simple. Might seem complicated, but that's something that I'm learning to do. And recognizing the little person in me and caring for that person. It's been neglected. Word. And for, and, um, for me, boundaries. Um, because I'm someone who's who's been well outside of my my boundary and in scarcity trying to assist and when i when i realize this i'm no assistance to them or myself either 
Um, and now I realize that when I advocate for my own boundaries, that others have a, a format and actually have thanked me for respecting my own boundaries because it's teaching them to love me better. So that's one of my biggest things right now is having sacred space with myself and enjoying my own company, uh, whether it be being out at the park, you know, I'll be talking to the birds and all kinds of things, you know, the birds know what's, what's happening. So, <laughs> so I'll be talking to them and I read books. Um, it took me a minute to get back to reading um, after so much trauma and that's why I really understand understand and overstand that we are all in different places you know I was coming from a point where I was so medicated that I couldn't read or speak um, uh, appropriately or, or put sentences together in my head uh, well and, and now I, I think back on that and I just and I'm grateful because I held on you know and so I know that um, a lot of a lot of power is inside each and every one of us at a biomolecular level, every cell, every cell, every atom is amazing, right? And, and, and just telling myself that. So every time I, I kind of do that beat down inside my head sometimes, I'm like, wait, hold up. Wait, you, you did this, okay? We made this, right? Do you remember five years ago? Would you touch that? No, okay, so you're doing okay. And so that's, uh, so that's what, yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Thank you for that. Okay, so we have one last question. Um, it's from the mother of a trans kid. Uh, how would you give back? Uh, how do you give back to the trans community as a queer parent? What would you tell that parent? Oh, and um, <laughs> so Van, your your puppy that's in the background. Um, someone's asking to see it as well. <laughs> oh, with the background. Oh, my <laughs> oh. <laughs> baby. <laughs> so how 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 would you um direct or or suggest that this parent give back to the trans community as a queer parent yeah. ask questions i guess you know and and connect to other parents and remain open um and understand that no matter what, I guess as a parent, that this is a gift. Even in your most probably darkest moments, I would like for you to remember that this is a gift. It is a gift. Yes, and I love you for loving your child. Thank you. I love you for loving your child. You're doing amazing. Thank you. And please inspire people to love their children and fearlessly advocate and tell them that they belong here. And so you walk up into them skill schools, you walk up into them community centers and you'd be like, this is my child. And this is what they need. And that's it. Because that's we're right. trailblazing for other children. Yes. Savannah? That's what I was saying, the love issue. Thanks for loving your child and sit and talk to your child and be educated by your child. And it's other, it's other organizations such as PFLAG that will help you along your way if you need, if you need more help. All right. If no one else, August, do you have anything to kind of toss out there before we wrap this? Yeah, I think like loving, loving your child is such an important uh, tidbit and also um, providing resources and speaking life into their their transition no matter however like however it looks right we don't we don't all uh become in the same way um and I think it's just really important to understand who your child is specifically um transness yes gender identity expression yes but who is your child um who, who are they becoming you know and and loving them through however that shows up is 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 critical, I think, to, to their safety um, and survival. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I wanted to share real, real quick. I know it's off that subject, but 
I looked at this channel called LX. It's a, a news channel and they do this thing on Saturday. They, they highlight people. And it was a young individual that was transgender but identified non-binary. And so they asked them, well, what is your future plan, plan, plans? And they said to be the first transgender president. And they said, well, explain what's trans, what, is, what is transgender? They said, me being me. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, thank you all for this conversation. Like Savannah said earlier, this is also something that um, I myself will carry, you know, until I, I stop breathing. Um, I appreciate all of you for not only the work that you do, but for the people that you are and, you know, how you show up for our community, how you show up for yourselves and how all of you have shown up for me as well. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, throw this back over to Gina. And, I, you know, I, I appreciate and love all of you for everything that you are. Thank you. Thank you, one and all, for this amazing, wonderful, powerful, I'm speechless, uh, and that doesn't happen very often, but um, y'all are beautiful, amazing, wonderful, passionate souls. I adore you, and thank you so much for being a part of this panel today. Really, really, thank you. Um, couple of quick little business things and then we will wrap up. Just so you know, this panel will be available to watch again and I implore you all to do so over and over again because there was so much wisdom and knowledge dropped and watch it over again. Transpride uh, at transpride.lalgbtcenter.org that is where you are going to find this. We are going to have this on a stream. You can watch it again. Definitely do that. All right. Um, we will be back tonight with our variety show starting at 7 p.m. So again, the website is going to be your friend. That is where the live stream will take uh, place. Um, been really wonderful to to share space with you all thank you again uh and we want to thank our, our sponsors our presenting sponsor angel city football club and heineken uh, our official sponsor the happy hippie foundation our supporting sponsor gilead sciences uh, and our wonderful media sponsor, The Fight Magazine. And just one last thing, the Angel City is inviting everyone to join their outdoor summer kickoff party on July 1st at their new home field of Bank of California Stadium. So you can check out all the details at Where Angel City on Instagram. All right, y'all, thank you again and happy Juneteenth watch this panel again. All right. Will you please? Will you please? Thank you all so much. You are wonderful, beautiful people. Thank you for sharing space with us. Happy Trans Pride, everybody. Happy Juneteenth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love you all. Thank you. Well. We'll see you. Thank you. Monday. Monday. Happy Juneteenth.